Oh, it's burning. Guys, it's a beauty of a day here. Just up my old stomping grounds. Got the Altai Hawks. Traveling late, I just got my knife and my saw. Me with a saw? Oh yeah, I'm gonna try it out. We'll see how that goes. I'm gonna go cut a, a T-ack, they call it, like a, like a ski pole, but it's just one instead of two. Because I'm hoping to do some downhill on these things today, so. Let's go grab one of those and we'll see where this takes us. It's a little lumpy. I'm a good candidate, but first I came here to hang up my uh, pack. Found a tree with all kinds of birch bark hanging off it. And the tree that we're going to be harvesting is right here on the left side of these little clumps. So this one here. I've got a hankering to even try that with my knife first before I dig out my saw. So we'll see how that goes. I don't want it to be too fat around at the bottom, but I still want it to have some strength, so I think right about here should do. Keep in mind that this is black spruce, which is not the easiest cutting thing in the world, but it might make a liar out of me yet. You guys might actually be reading away. I'll push her over this way. Uh, rather than do this every time I come back in the woods, after I harvest this, what I'm going to do is let it dry and season. Of course, I'm going to keep using it, but uh, yeah, this will be my TX for the time being. Now, you could harvest a fresh one every time, theoretically, but. It's not the most sustainable practice if everybody does that. There's something to be said about using the right tool too. I see all these videos of guys, oh my one knife that will do everything. Why not get everything that will do what you want it to do? Unless you're an ultralight pack type guy. Oh well. So here's our tree. I think that's going to work out pretty good. And the other nice thing, harvesting a tree like this that was so close to another one, is it actually makes the other tree healthier so that they don't have to compete with each other for sunlight and nutrients and minerals and all that good stuff. Yeah, I think 
that's going to be okay. The other nice thing about this isn't just about keeping your balance. But notice I don't have my gun with me today. Not that I'm paranoid about not having it, but man got by for quite a long time with sticks, so. Well, let's see how long we're at this time. Maybe to about here. Just gonna do some chest draw cuts, although I happened to pick a whirl, that was good. All kinds of knots there, but just gonna go around the whole thing. Because basically all I'm doing is scoring it. Score! That should just break right off. That might be pretty good. Now, the only thing I've got left to do is maybe peel it off. Or I might just scrape it for now because what's going to happen if I peel this is my mittens are going to get so full of sap. So remember last episode we sharpened up the spine of our knife? Look at that. That harvests and shreds and does everything I want it to do with ease. I don't really need to go the whole way down today. Like I say, I'm going to do this up nice and season it eventually. Maybe put some boiled linseed oil on it or something. Some pine tar. Get lots of that at work. Just getting the loose stuff off. I say that and I just chew right into the canvas. Smells good though. One tick. All right, let's get out on the trail. You know what? It is silly warm. This is crazy. Like it's not crazy. It's almost May, second last day of April. Tomorrow's the last day of bird season, so I guess I got enough in the freezer for now. But it is warm. Wow. Alright, I'm gonna peel off a bit here and keep going. So, another nice thing about this tea, ice crossings. I feel a little better. Whew. There you are. I feel a little better knowing I got this with me. It's not like it's too bad right now, but depending on currents and things, you uh, might find some thin spots still, so. Yeah, lots of uses. This looks like just as good a place as any to stop and maybe make a cup of tea. I got some firewood there. I got some bare rock I can put it on up there, just don't have to worry about anything. I got my stick. Today is a good day, huh? Yeah. Pretty stoked. As much as I'm sweating my uh, my backside off here. Well, let's go make a cup of tea. Well, all you guys that were telling me that I should really pack a saw, Mark Young, anyways, <laughs> you're probably right. So, I didn't pack an axe at all today. I feel kind of naked. No axe, no gun. 
Ja. And these are the 125 centimeter hawks, which are a little easier for maneuvering apparently. So, so far, so good. Give myself a little space here. That's a little wet. Right here. So there's one thing to keep in mind too. It's pretty wet underneath me here. It's pretty swampy actually. Yeah, so down here the saw was binding a bit. And right away the first thing I was thinking of with that was that it's probably softened the moisture up out of the ground, especially now that things are thawing again. So, yeah. Save yourself the, uh, the frustration. Don't bother cutting wet wood.
fire, would you? I'll go back to the first fire and we'll get the next We got fire. Now we need a cup of tea. And today's tea is decaffeinated orange pico. No bush tea today, just regular tea. Snow is this wet. Probably isn't going to take near as much of it as if it was really light, fluffy snow. They get breathing sometimes. It's not gonna take long to dry my clothes out either, I don't think. Definitely got a little sweaty on the way out here. I think it's supposed to get up to like 6 or 8 degrees today, somewhere around there, so that'll be all right. But it's a warm 6 or 8 degrees up here. Wood was still a little damp, I think. Usually don't have this much problems. Trying something different this time too. So it's kind of a combination upside down fire, miniature long fire, Siberian log fire on top. So we'll see how that goes. But if I get a cup of tea out of it and stay warm, then that's cool beans. One thing I like about a fire is you can sit around it and do things. So since I'm waiting for my tea to boil here, maybe I'll work on my uh, my tea act. It's a good little practice hobby project type thing for you too if you're just starting out at bushcraft. I want to become a little more competent with your knife. Almost lost my tea there. That would have had catastrophic consequences. I know Morse Kohansky's got a big thing on being able to strip a piece of stick like this off in a certain amount of time, but 
I don't see the rush out here. I mean, the more you do it, the better you're going to get at it. That's all that matters. Get out and do it and have fun. It's like, uh, like Lars says on Survival Russia. Get out there and train and get it done. So, that's what I'm going to do. All the days I'm giving on this green earth to uh, go out and enjoy it. Yeah, try my damn just to be able to do that. And this is a good way to practice. It's one thing peeling it where it's a nice straight go, but you get these knots. You gotta be kind of aggressive and smash through them. Yeah, this should dry out nice. I might even do some wood burning on it. Oh, I'm gonna have spruce flavored, uh, spruce flavored tea it looks like. Oh well. People used to eat the, uh, the inner bark off it, so I guess it won't kill me. Actually, if any of you guys watch Far North Bushcraft and Survival with Lonnie and Connie up in South Central Alaska, he actually did a video on making breakfast one time out of, I believe it was spruce bark. Almost like a, I wouldn't call it like a hot oatmeal, but like a mash or something, I guess. Come on, you. The wind's kind of changing around a bit here. The winds have changed. It's nice to have a little project, keep your mind occupied and keep your hands busy. Keep you from thinking about all those bears that just woke up probably that are pretty hungry. Oh, that could be bad. Nah. You don't hear of all kinds of people getting eaten or mauled by them up here too much. Just a few. I don't even have anything with me food-wise for smell other than a can of Spam. Well, I would say this one needs a little rearranging. Not exactly my best fire I've ever made. Have to get her breathing a bit here. So we can get some flame. Flame good, smoke bad. There you go. Don't take much sometimes. That feels like a good fire. Dry my pants off. So when this dries, this is going to be a lot lighter than it is now, hopefully. Just like I thought, I filled that cup up with that wet snow, and it's a little, probably around two thirds full, so it won't take much to top that up if I even bother. Just enough room for the cream, if I had any. so that if my knife slips, it's going to go down here and not into my leg. That always makes for a bad day. Well, I think it's almost time for tea. Oh boy, there's our water. It's hard boiled there for a minute or so. That'll be refreshing. Okay, 
we might as well give you guys a view here. We're up on the rock. And that overlooks just this little swampy boggy bit here. Trail runs along down through there and cuts across this. It's a pretty spot. I'm trying to rearrange the uh, the fire a bit here. It's burning good. One thing I did do though, was take my boot and I made a little trough down through here just to draw some air. And the other thing is rip roaring now. Goodbye smoke. Just gotta play the wind right, I guess. Well guys, our tiak all kind of roughly finished here until we do some little maybe decorations or carving on it at home, but fire's out, stuff's all packed up ready to go. And I'm going to head back on out to the Jeep here, have a good slide out, so thanks you guys for watching another episode of Bushcraft North of 60. Be sure to follow us on Facebook as well, you can find us at capital B N little O 60, B N O 60 on Facebook. Be sure to share, like, subscribe, comment, let me know what you think, if you have any other ideas, or if you know more than I do, by all means let me know. And there's that little bell thing, the notification, make sure you hit that. Wow. I thought that was some sort of uh, horn, but I think that was somebody's sled hitting wide open throttle. Anyways, that just goes to show you can be in the middle of nowhere and somebody still be back there. So I'm going to head out back to the Jeep. i got about four kilometers on the old uh, Altai Hawk skis to go here. So looking forward to that. And we'll see you guys next time here from the Northwest Territories in Northern Canada. Thanks a lot, guys.